This is my corridor sensor and it stopped responding six days ago. I only find out today. Hey guys, a long time ago I've made a project called Zigbee Low Battery Warning which would notify your Android phone whenever one of these devices would, uh, well, run out of power. It was a great way to keep uh, tabs on all Zigbee devices and replace the batteries before they run out. But this project had one, well, flaw. Maybe not a flaw, but a shortcoming. It wasn't really notifying you if there was any other problem with a Zigbee device. And yes, you could open Zigbee to MQTT dashboard and kind of try to figure out through there how long it's been since you got a last report from any battery operated devices or just normal devices. But that takes time and it's just unwieldy. How did I discover that I have a problem? Well, the battery reporting on this one says the battery is okay and the temperature, well, at least last log temperature, which I used to calculate uh, set point at home, was what I would expect in that region anyway. So it took me a couple of days to actually register that I'm not getting any new information from the sensor. And I only figured this I went out while looking at my uh, new dashboard for home automation. The color for the corridor wasn't really changing. So today I've decided to change that, or actually include part of this in my DIY smart heating version 4.0, which is long time coming and it took me ages to actually get it moving for various reasons. A while ago, in this video, I took a look at the best 11 Zigbee temperature and humidity sensors and one of the metrics I um, basically looked at, apart from the obvious, like providing you out with accurate humidity and temperature, was the frequency of the responses, so how often a sensor like this would submit data back to your coordinator. It's a very useful metric and it can help you to kind of figure out what's wrong with your sensor. And that metric, that frequency, depends on a couple of factors. First, it's the temperature change. A sudden temperature change should trigger an update from a sensor like that very quickly, usually within a couple of seconds, oh, at 30 seconds at most really. Then there is a regular interval. That interval depends really on the environmental changes outside as well. If there are lots of changes, you will have reporting frequency increased for a couple of minutes, but if there is no other factors changing around the sensor, the sensor may become dormant for extensive periods of time, and that could be anywhere from a minute to five or even 15 minutes. So how do you know when you have a problem? Well, you kind of have to guess, and I'm guessing here, and by default, right now, what I want to do is receive this phone notification if one of these isn't responding for two hours. Because two hours seems to be, you know, a good enough time frame in which some temperature changes should happen and I should definitely have response from a sensor like this. So if the battery is good, why these sensors could become unresponsive? There are three reasons why. First, you might have a crappy battery. I mean, the battery might be low, but not low enough to indicate there is a problem, and each time the sensor is trying to respond back, you need to draw more current. At that point, the device is basically run out of charge and dies. Another reason could be range, especially if you see a sensor reporting from time to time, but not frequently as you like. It means that only some of the payloads are getting through, but not all of them. In this case, you'll have to reposition a sensor or, even better, add more routers to your mesh. The last reason, it could be a faulty device, but it doesn't have to be a faulty sensor. It could be a faulty router that is basically connected to the sensor and responsible for handling information from a sensor here. Now, the best way to troubleshoot that, obviously, would be disconnecting suspected routers from your mesh and seeing if that fixed the issue. But if the device is at fault, then you probably have to get a new sensor. And this is the node red section, it's not going to be very complex. First, you have to go to manage your palette and add the join uh, node. That's the join here, responsible for sending uh, Android notification. You'll have to configure it, but I already have an entire article and video about it, so jump on here, it'll tell you what to do. Now that you have everything ready. There's a couple of things that we have to make sure they are set in order to get this to work. First, 
the requirement is to have all your sensors inside the sensor flow. So this is how you're going to access the basic information. Now, you don't have to set your sensor in exactly the same way, but what you have to have is those two value key uh, pairs. So one is the room and one is the last report. And if you wonder how to get that uh, date of the last report, you only have to do really is just assign the dates to it. Uh, I'll show you in my uh, tool in here. You can see that uh, every time I have uh, an update, I assign a date now uh, to a timestamp and that's being added to each sensor. So this is an array. Every sensor is an object. You can put as many of different information in that object as you want, but you must have room and you must have last report. Otherwise, you'll have to modify a lot more. So now that you have this done and you have your all sensors here, then uh, just jump into settings. In the settings on start menu, you'll have just a couple of uh, preferences to set. First is the timeout in minutes. 120 minutes seems like good value, it's two hours. So I would leave it at that. Then you have devices. You can either select for join name of the devices or devices ID. Again, just visit that uh, um, join API um, write up and everything's going to be very clear. Now use names. By default, it's going to use this field names. If you're going to set that to true, it'll use device IDs. Instead, there is an icon that you can add to your Android notification. It has to be publicly available. And the icon selected right now is just this little sensor here. And title of your notification, you can change that if you want. Reminder means that your notification is going to be basically uh, reminded, reminding you every day of uh, all the sensors that are unresponsive, so been inactive for over two hours. And if you want, you can include battery. Now, if you set that to true, just make sure again that your sensor information has the battery percent value saved in this format. Otherwise, you'll have to adjust it. So, how does it work? Every five minutes, it checks all the sensors that I have on that list. And then it checks when was the last update and whether their last update was further than two hours ago. That's pretty much it in here. Now, it will uh, compose the, a list of the sensors that, well, it didn't have updates for two hours. And you, know, you can see those two sensors, they didn't have updates. You can create a log of them. And then we'll basically push that to my mobile phone and make sure that each notification is selected that well we notified you about these ones but if there is any new ones we'll notify you again so that's what's going to happen every hour so at best after three hours or well, it's worst actually after three hours you're going to get notified that your sensor is unresponsive which is i think good enough now lastly now, uh, now notification is being done in here there's a message push created and sent to my join which then take care of uh, displaying android notification and lastly, every um, day at 8 a.m. you will clear that log. So if you had any notifications that are going to be wiped first, uh, so new sensors that will join this list, gonna basically well send you a notification again. So as long as you follow all of these instructions, then you'll be able to set it up for yourself and get a notification to your Android phone to help you troubleshoot your Zigbee network issues. As for now, well, my next step is actually to look again at that Zigbee Low Battery Warning project and probably integrate both of them together and uh, work on some bugs on that original project as the node red has been updated since and there are a better way of setting up projects that the way I used to do it. Obviously, I'm still going to work on my uh, smart home heating and as soon as I've got some more information, I'll be sharing that for you. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, feel free to look into the description to uh, see the written article and download link to the node red flow that you can test it yourself. And well, I wish you happy automation. Oh, by the way, don't forget to follow me like, nah, I'm not going to do it. All the info is on the screen right now. So feel free to browse. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.